Welcome to the pole cam flying lessons for our ultra portable jib. While the shots that you can get with a pole cam are very similar to ones that you can get with a heavier jib, flying or operating a pole cam has a slightly different feel, more like a steady cam than a jib. These lessons are designed to give a new pole cam operator some ideas for how to practice with their rig in order to improve their skills. Probably the most important lesson to be learned and kept in mind is that one should fly the head and not the monitor. This basically means that one should resist your natural tendency to watch the monitor while flying the rig. The reason one flies the head is because the monitor is just a two-dimensional representation of the environment that you're flying through. Watching the head will give you much more information about where you can place the camera in 3D space and therefore get much closer to objects and get much more dynamic shots. Remember, if you watch the monitor while you're flying backwards, you cannot see where you're going or what is above you or below you. The monitor should be used as reference for framing when working with your subject, but most of your attention during the moves should be focused on the position of the camera, the lens, and the head of the rig. Beyond that, it is simply a question of hand-eye coordination and practice. The camera has a wide angle of view. Trust what it's seeing, and if it looks like it's pointing in the right direction, it will be. The most basic move to practice when starting to work with the rig is a simple side-to-side -side move. Just find an object and place it a few inches or centimeters in front of the head of the rig, and then swing the arm side-to-side, -side, trying to keep the object in the center of the frame. Most people have a tendency to be able to keep the object in the center on the approach, but tend to overshoot as they move the arm away from the subject. It really is a balance between your hand on the boom and the hand on the joystick. If you move the boom at an even speed, the closer you get to the object, the faster you'll have to move the head. Once you've done that and feel comfortable with it, raise the challenge by adding obstacles on one or both sides of your object. This will help to practice controlling the arm as you swing it, as well as helping to gauge the distance at the head. Try not to bump into the obstacles, and then feather the start and the stops. The same principle applies to moving the arm up and down. This can be a very dramatic shot, moving from a very low angle to a close-up to a high shot, or perhaps down again to a low shot. Practice keeping the face of the subject in the center of the frame. Once you've gotten skilled at this move, then combine the up-down move with the side-to-side -side move to get a dramatic low shot to a close-up, then back to a low shot. Don't worry about watching the monitor during the practice, as the framing is not critical here, and you're not worried about crashing into anything. Think about the relationship between your two hands. Get a feel for the movement of the boom arm in relation to the movement of the head. Once you've practiced these simple approaches and backing off, it's time to try moving around and over the subject. The idea in all of these lessons is to give you practice in controlling the head and what's on the screen of your rig. Combine the approach from the side to side shot with a 180 degree spin over the subject and then slide away in the opposite direction. It's a good idea to practice these moves slowly at first, making sure that you're able to maintain good control of your framing. Yes, it can be tricky to keeping yourself out of the shot sometimes. Once you've mastered the move slowly, it's time to turn up the speed and practice keeping control. The biggest mistake people make in this practice mode is doing the moves too quickly. At this practice stage, control is much more important than speed. When you've gotten good at these moves, you can practice landing the head. Get a cup or a small box and put it at a distance the head can reach. Lock the wheels of the tripod so that the distance to the cup is always the same. Now practice dive bombing into the cup or the box. Try doing it while watching just the monitor. See how much harder it is? Now do the exact same landing by turning off the monitor and just flying the head. You'll notice immediately how much easier it is to land the lens right in the middle of the cup when you're not distracted by the monitor. Another very useful technique to practice is the obstacle course. Start with something easy, a few objects of different sizes and shapes at different distances to the head. First, plan your shot. What will you go over? What will you go around? What will you go under? Practice doing it at a slow speed. In the real world, this is a good time for you to figure out what will look more dramatic and interesting in your shot. Planning a great shot and then practicing it will give you a much better result than just diving in. This is another good time to turn off the monitor and even record your move. Turn your monitor back on and then play back what you recorded. See how well you did. You'll probably be surprised at how much of the shot is in frame even with the monitor off. This really helps to build confidence in flying just the head rather than the monitor. 
Remember, this is a very different technique to flying a bigger, heavier jib. The trick here is perfect balance and a very light-handed approach as opposed to the sheer force sometimes needed to move a larger crane. These moves aren't necessarily ones you'll be performing every time you take the rig out to shoot. Most moves tend to be simpler and look dynamic because of the unique positions that you can fly into. These moves are designed to build hand-eye coordination and give you better control over a camera that can be up to 28 feet away from you. If you practice the tough stuff, the simple stuff will be easy. Once you become good at flying the head, start practicing checking the monitor for fine framing, especially at the beginning and ending of the shots. This is how most operators tend to work. First, plan your shot and practice it if it is possible. Even in a live event, you should be able to practice a move with a rough idea of where your subject will be. Second, set up a good looking frame for the beginning of the shot while looking at the monitor and get ready to roll. Third, fly the head through the shot you planned and practiced. Finally, bring your head to the end position, checking your fine framing on the monitor as the shot comes to a close. There's no magic to this technique. Everyone can learn to be a first class operator if you spend the time to practice your moves. And if in doubt, make it simpler and slower. And remember, a wide shot is all about background and foreground. Your skills at composing a frame will shine once you've mastered the craft of the pole cam system. Thank you for watching.